uh, Myers, let, let me come back to uh, just a re, re, uh, quick response to uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Blum says there's no evidence that this bill will save lives. It's deceptive. It's harmful to the public health. It's a Marlboro Protection Act. Um, it should carry its own warning label. Pretty strong uh, indictment of the, uh, the legislation. Um, your uh, response. Well, I have great respect um, for Dr. Blum, but I think it's not an accurate factual representation of what's in the bill. Um, he said that the bill will strictly regulate new products but not apply the same standards to existing products. That's just wrong. Section 907 gives the FDA um, broad authority to regulate existing products as well as new products. In fact, it's the strongest regulatory standard ever proposed for any regulatory agency whatsoever. He said that it will inhibit the introduction of new products. That, too, is wrong. What it will do is inhibit manufacturers from making health claims for new products before they have the scientific evidence from doing so. As we know, our experience shows that if you allow tobacco companies to make claims for products, um, not only will they mislead the public, but they won't have any incentive to make actually less, re less hazardous products. If anything, this bill um, will, for the first time, give tobacco companies and, and others the incentives to make ser um, serious changes to those products. He says it has no mandates to eliminate toxic gases. That's wrong. Um, it provides the FDA with full authority to um, require changes into toxic materials, including gases in them. We have to understand what the status quo is. The status quo is nobody has any authority to require any tobacco company to make any change in its product. And as a result of that, the status quo is that the co changes that tobacco companies make are more accurately what Dr. Henningfield described, those that make the product more addictive, more attractive, without regard to its health hazards. He spoke about past failed efforts. The problem is we have relied on voluntary action in the past. So when he talks about advertisements about Carlton is the lowest, he ignores the fact that this bill would allow the FDA, matter of fact, it would mandate that the FDA prevent exactly those kinds of claims, absent scientific evidence. Not only that the claim is truthful, but that the claim is being made in such a way so that it won't discourage millions of people from smoking. He claims that it doesn't um, mandate the elimination of menthol. Well, that's one of those half-truth statements uh, that is very important. It gives FDA authority to regulate menthol, but to do it in a way based on sound science as opposed to making a political decision without knowing what the impact would be automatically today of eliminating it. Uh, Dr. Blum's experience in this field is, unpar is unparalleled in terms of its length. But when you look at the terms of this legislation, it presents a very different picture when you look at its details than what was presented as the underpinning of his testimony. Um, Dr. Blum, my time is, but I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, will, you, you'll probably want to rebut what has been stated there, and I'll make sure that it's a part of the record uh, if it doesn't come out from other uh, people, if, you, if you'll have it. But uh, my time is up. We'll have. You haven't sent it, Okay, so I'll yes, make sure. I'll make I'll make sure you might have others who'll come back to you and ask, but let's I'll make sure that it's in if it if you're not asked about it further. Send it, Enzi. Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I I won't be able to pass up the opportunity on that, but I've got to tell you I've got hundreds of questions. No, I started with hundreds of questions. Now I've got a lot more, and I I do appreciate all of you volunteered to testify. I hope you also volunteered to answer questions that we won't have time to put in five minutes. Um, I'm, uh, Mr. Myers, uh, to follow up just a little bit on what you said, before I give <laughs> Mr. Blum a chance to unload, um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> even if it's a new product and the FDA says that it's okay to sell it, isn't that putting an FDA stamp of approval on a product that's going to kill them? Is it going to be made safe enough that it won't? You, you raise a very thoughtful and important question. Um, the bill was carefully crafted. In fact, there are at least five different sections of the legislation that would authorize FDA to prohibit a manufacturer from saying that a product is FDA approved. 
um, if FDA found that that was necessary to protect the public health because the drafters of this legislation were concerned about the same issue. In fact, FDA doesn't approve most products. What FDA does is approve in terms of whether or not there's adequate scientific evidence to make a claim so that it will prevent the tobacco companies from misleading the public the way they currently do. Um, and the only time the FDA actually gets in the process of approving whether a new product comes on the market is when it's not substantially equivalent. So the issue you raise is a very important one. This legislation has tried in a very thoughtful way. My, my to, time's pretty to, limited. Okay, I, th I think you've made your point. To prevent the uh, tobacco companies from doing exactly what you're concerned about. Actually, from the FDA hearings that we've had, they can't control labeling, they can't control advertising, they can suggest. But this now, on our reform, this on our reform, uh, on our reform bill that we have, there'll be some additional criteria on that. But any way you look at it, they'll be able to say the the constituents were approved or looked at. Um, I, I wish I had time to ask Mr. Henningfield some more questions about some things like that. Um, Another thing that will come into it is who's going to pay the fees on this. We're looking at the medical device, the PADUFA and MADUFA, and f trying to figure out how to get all of the pay for that sort of thing. Can we get the companies to pay for all of the testing? And I do suggest that we would have to back up to the very beginning on the testing and test every single ingredient every time there's a change. Um, uh, Mr. Blum, you looked like you had a few comments you wanted to make on those, too. If Part of the unloading process here. Thank you, Senator Enzi. Uh, I think this bill creates a bridge on the River Kwai for the tobacco industry. It's what they want, at least Philip Morris does, because it will g have government sanctioned cigarettes. We already know what Marlboro does. Marlboro kills. Whatever the market share is, it's 40 percent of the market. Marlboro is taking the lives of 40 percent of those 400,000 that die from tobacco smoke every year. What, what more is there to know? The definition of uh, research that we need to know more on this is the definition of infinity. There are always going to be curious questions but we already know what cigarettes do to you. All the other tobacco products put together do not cause the harm that cigarettes do. And this regulation largely grandfathers in Marlboro. Sure, as, as uh, Matt Myers said, it does grant the authority of the FDA to do certain things, to maybe consider these things and modify the product, but it doesn't mandate. The only thing the bill mandates is candy flavorings, uh, bigger warning labels or new and improved warning labels so that if the deaf person can hear you, you got a little yell, uh, yell louder. Uh, and it, it uh, has uh, more of the, the kinds of reliance on machine measurements, which Dr. Connolly in his recent article in Tobacco Control has said is bogus. So the science that the FDA is going to be relying on is by those who study what kinds of statistics we're relying on anyway through machine measurements of tar and nicotine are already unreliable. Where is the science standard going to come from? I, I don't think anybody knows that. There's also the matter of ethics. If you were to conduct research to show whether or not a product is going to cause, reduce harm, I don't know any institutional review board at any university that would approve those subjects to take cigarette A or cigarette B or tobacco product A and tobacco product B and study those over the 20 and 30 years that it will take to see whether one product reduces harm over another. The cigarette bill will not affect the sale of cigarettes in pharmacies. We're the only country in the world where cigarettes are sold alongside medications. As Paul Harvey said, uh, America is the only place where the, the sick people have to walk all the way in the back to get their medicines, and the healthy people get their cigarettes right up front. I, I thank you, and, and as I mentioned, I've got questions for everybody. I have particularly some number questions, and as the only accountant, <clears throat> I'm always fascinated by the number one, so I apologize for not having an opportunity to ask them right now, but I will uh, put those in writing and, and would suggest that maybe the Federal Trade Commission ought to be involved in this, maybe as opposed to the FDA. They're the ones that really control false advertising, or I hope control false advertising. And, and that's what we're talking about here, uh, besides the need to do more testing and have more disclosure. I, um, but I, I just worry a lot about this FDA seal of approval, whether implied or actual, uh, that's going to come about through this process. We, we've got to find some way. The uh, oncologist that uh, worked with my wife had the uh, hospital attorney visit him because he said that he wasn't going to treat people that smoked anymore for cancer because they were working against themselves. And uh, there's a little a little bit of a brouhaha going on over that, but uh, we, we know that cigarettes kill. Now we've got to figure out how we can keep it from killing as many people.